vandalism is often associated with mindless destruction and chaos. However, some vandals show incredible creativity in their work, which can make even the most law-abiding citizens appreciate their art. These are random acts of vandalism that are truly genius and can leave people with a smile, thinking that's clever. Number 7. Bird Graffiti takes many shapes and forms. Sometimes it's done by kids just to annoy property owners. Other times, it's an expression of art that can be quite impressive. One such example is a bird drawn on the back of a building. Usually the backs of buildings, especially those that face alleys, are dark, dirty, and have unsightly pipes and other things. So, what do you do with an ugly building? You make it beautiful with art. A very skilled artist drew a bird on the back of a building that appears to be perched on a pipe. Beneath the bird, there is a pile of bones from various birds and animals. The bird is looking down on them, as if it was the one who put them there. Art critics have two interpretations of the piece. Either the bird has eaten the animals, or the artwork represents reform and feelings of regret. Regardless of the reason, it certainly takes care of that unsightly building in the best way possible. Who doesn't love birds after all? Number 6. Lend a Hand Hard work doesn't have to be all rainbows and butterflies and positivity. It can also be subtle, discreet, and powerful in its meaning. Hidden away on the side of a staircase is three small black figures, and that's all it takes to form a powerful message. It might be a random act of vandalism on a city street, but no one will be complaining when they come to understand what it means, unless you own those stairs, and well, you might be a bit annoyed. The artwork shows a small person standing on a lower step, another on the level above holding a hand down to that person, and a third on the top level looking down, almost as if they're stressed or confused. The artwork, while subtle, is supposed to represent how even though someone can move up the ladder or up the ranks, they can still provide help to those who need it down below, and even those who have gotten as far as they can go may not be genuinely settled and happy, and may also be confused, man. Number 5. Funny Boat Usolo is a stunning coastal town located in Venice, Italy. It is renowned as one of the largest beach resorts in the country and attracts a large number of tourists. However, this popularity comes with a downside as the town experiences increased vandalism by both tourists and locals who party till the early hours. To counter this issue, the town has implemented various security measures such as security officers patrolling the area, lighthouses illuminating the entire beach, and unique boats that serve as an unconventional way of preventing vandalism. These boats have stairs to board them and slides to exit them, providing tourists with an enjoyable activity to take part in, instead of vandalizing the township. While we are not a tourist guide, we can mention some fun things to do in Usolo if you happen to be visiting. You can visit the Parco de Vetement a Solo Andia, a small park with rides, or the Caribbe Bay Water Park with a massive slide. If you are an architecture enthusiast, you may enjoy visiting the parish of San Giovanni Battista, a Catholic church. However, it is crucial to keep in mind not to vandalize anything. Number 4. Minions One of the last places you want to be caught vandalizing is Singapore. The country is so proud that you can't even buy chewing gum there in case it ends up on city streets. If you're caught doing anything that destroys its image, imprisonment can follow. So, it's often not worth the risk unless you're Lithuanian artist Ernest Zakharovic. Ernest was on a month-long residency in Singapore and wanted to express himself in the only way he knows how, through art. The problem is, well, that he's in Singapore. Fortunately, Ernest won the support of locals who happily offered up their private buildings for him to paint on. What he created was exceptional. He turned bollards and posts into little minions from the film Despicable Me. He also worked with any imperfections on those bollards, such as turning a concrete base into a pile of bananas and a chip out of the top into a broken open skull with brain showing. There is no limit to Ernest Zakharovic's creativity, except, well, you know, maybe the law. Good thing he wasn't chewing gum while creating these works of art. Number 3. Malaysia Vandalism Vandalism is a major issue in Malaysia. According to council documents, the destruction of public properties in Selanga, Malaysia causes losses of more than RM10 million each year, which is around 2.5 million US dollars. This figure may be even higher in other cities, indicating that the problem is widespread. 
The issue of vandalism is prevalent in urban parks, signage, bus stops, billboards, and even people's fences and buildings. Basically, it is everywhere. Although much of the graffiti and vandalism in Malaysia lacks creativity and is ugly, some of it is quite the opposite. For instance, there is a cleverly painted picture of an older gentleman by the water on the side of a building in Penang, Malaysia. In the background, there is a boat in a river or lake. Although the building may not be the cleanest or most well-maintained, it deserves recognition for its artwork, which is an ingenious act of vandalism that enhances, rather than detracts from, the building's appeal. However, the same cannot be said for some parts of Malaysia. Not only do some people write and draw on private property, but they also put stickers and posters over road signs and other signage. Getting around a foreign country can be challenging enough without being unable to see signs. Number 2. The Zebra If you haven't heard of Banksy by now, then you've undoubtedly been living under a rock. Banksy is a street artist based in England that has been a film director, artist and political activist since the 1990s. He creates satirical street art and dark humorous graffiti, and any works by him are worth a fortune. Why? Because no one knows who he is. Viewing Banksy's works of art is a pleasure, even if he is technically a vandal. It seems to pop up everywhere and always with dramatic meanings that get you thinking. An example of that is street art he produced in Africa in 2009. On the side of a damaged building, he painted a zebra missing stripes and a woman hanging those stripes on a clothes line. According to many, the artwork supposedly depicts how sinning art as vandalism is stopping artists from being able to express their individuality and creativity. However, no one will probably know for sure. All we know is that this piece of artwork is Banksy's signature style, which means he made the journey to Africa, but for an unknown reason. We don't even know if that's what he meant. He's such a dark, mysterious artist. Number 1. Face of City The question of whether street art is vandalism is a subject of debate. Some view it as a form of vandalism, while others consider it art. A face painted on the side of a building, using plants as hair, was created by the artist Dan Bergeron. The concept behind the artwork was to delve into personal identity, social relationships, and the idea that a face is a vessel. The beauty of the artwork lies not only in its design, but also in the way it has been cleverly displayed. The artist only added the lips, nose, eyes, and the outline of the neck, ears, and chin to the existing bushes. The artwork was formed by the end shape of the bushes, which created the outline of the head, with minimal use of materials and paint. Even the shadows were in the right place. It is unclear whether Dan had permission to paint the artwork, but based on the use of natural materials and the skillful execution, it is debatable whether it can be classified as vandalism. If you once believed you were the next Picasso, has that perception changed? Some of the vandalism we see is quite clever and imaginative. Have you witnessed similar acts firsthand?